video I want to show you how to create plywood panels to add to this framing model and give you a better idea of how to build with bytes before boards for better project planning. So here's the model from the two previous sessions where I drew 2x4s and then framing lumber and I embellished it with sawhorses and some lumber here just to give an idea of it looking like a digital job site I guess but uh, to clean this up a little bit let's take a few things out here and that way we're just working with a straight surface we're to make a plywood panel and make a sheet of three-quarter inch tongue and groove plywood so I've drawn this rectangle and we want it to be let's say 0.75 comma 10 to start off with and we'll make this a group and then go into that group and do a couple things here and the first thing we want to do is make a tongue and a groove so our tongue is going to be a quarter inch by three eighths we take this little box here and move it by the center point here and then index it to the center point on this rectangle and then copy one of these to the other side of our rectangle. We have that. I'm going to erase one little line and then I'm going to click out of this and put a dimension on here. And go back in and move this out until we have a piece that's 48 inches wide. Or four feet zero is what I want. So I got four feet, and then I'm just going to move it back one eighth of an inch, and then ends up at four feet. And this tongue and groove plywood comes different ways. Sometimes it's 48 inches including the tongue and sometimes the face is 48 inches and sometimes it's a little bit less for gapping during installation etc. But I'm just going to leave it at 48 inches for now. And then I'm just going to, with that profile made, we're just going to pull out 96 inches and there's a 4 by 8 sheet of plywood that will work just fine. So let's go ahead and add some color to it. Let's add this plywood to two uh, surfaces and I like to put this bamboo looking stuff on the edge to make it look like the veneer of plywood and I don't like the way that looks so we're going to go into texture, position, I'm going to flip this around and shrink it down. It's a little jumpy there but we'll get it. Okay so now we got that. That looks good. And then I'm going to take the select tool. Let's see. Let's go like this. Let's just select everything in the group and then deselect the face and the face and paint everything else with this material and see what we get. And it backfired on me. So let's take that. Go back a couple steps here. So we have what we want selected. So I'm going to grab this with the eyedropper tool. There we go. So that should have painted the whole edge, and it did. And that's a lot of times working with that texture is f funny things happen, and I'm sure there's some reason that it works out the way it does. I'm not sure of all the exact reasons. So I just end up clicking around a little bit to get things to behave like I want them to, and then leave it at that. So there you have it. So there's a group of a piece of plywood. And if we wanted to do a sheet of half inch plywood, you can imagine that this is going to be pretty simple. I'm just going to go in here and grab one face of this. Control C, get back out, paste in place, and move that over. Looks like I still have the shadows turned on there. Let's get rid of that. So now we have this. Gonna make this a group. Go into the group. Oops, I'm moving it instead. Go into the group with a double click.
stretch it to a half inch, 0.5. We lost our texture for some reason. And I think I made it thicker again there too with an erroneous click. So anyway, so let's go in here and let's just put this on everything. Yeah, and then we'll go take select and this eyedropper and we'll pull the face off of this plywood here and paint it on those two surfaces. Oops, I failed to unselect everything. Okay, so now I'm gonna go back, eyedropper, and we'll pull this plywood face and put it on the two faces. Then we have that veneered looking edge. So with those steps, you can see how simple it is. If of course a person was gonna make some 3 8 plywood or anything else, as far as plywood goes, there's some steps to do it. You get pretty, a pretty realistic look to it. And I've been meaning to say, uh, I like to work with models with this texture, but to some people that just might uh, complicate things or confuse it. So it, even if you're putting textures in there and they start to annoy you, you can click out by using this other selection and just get the shaded faces. Or here is just colors, and then this puts the textures back. So um, if, if the texture is not something you want, there's ways of dealing with that pretty simply. And with that, uh, going through how to create these plywood panels. I'll stop here and then show how to work with them in the model in a segment here in just a little bit. Thanks for watching. For the building with bikes segment of this tutorial, I'm going to take some of this plywood, this group of plywood here, and make floor sheathing out of it. So I've selected one of these groups, and I'm just going to grab it by a corner down here, stick it there, the rotate tool in the blue direction on that corner, I'm just going to swing this around 90 degrees. And because I didn't do my joist framing like a carpenter would have, let's see, what are we going to do? We're going to take, go into this group, Take all these things, I'm just going to slide them over 0.75. There we go. Now the plywood breaks, just like a responsible carpenter would have done in the first place. Of course, now the wall studs aren't going to quite line up like we think they should. And let's get rid of this dimension. We kind of don't need that anymore. So let's just slap the full sheets on here with a move and a control. And the next sheet would go right here. Grab this end, I'm sliding it in the green direction. I'm going to index it to the center of that joist. And then we'll take another one of these, move and copy that. Let's see if we can just go here 48 inches. And we need to go 96 inches to get it to line up over there. And that never happens on a real job site, of course, you know that. But here we are. So let's take this and this one and move and can copy it. Let's go over here 96. 96 enter. We're just slapping full sheets on here because they're digital. We don't have to worry about wasting them. And we're going to move these 96. And now we just go in and do some cutting, which is kind of a topic for another video. But because we've made this plywood into groups, and not components, I can go in one at a time and just edit these. All I'm doing is taking the board stretcher or the unstretcher in this case, shrinking these panels down. And this, these lessons were very hard for me to learn because on a real job site, you can't do this stuff. It's you know, throwing away all kinds of material and uh, you gotta worry about where every scrap goes, but with SketchUp, you don't, you just toss these digital pieces out in the dumpster and nobody cares because nobody knows and then you can plan your real model so that you're not wasteful. So there we have a pretty good job except we still got to trim this one can't go home until this job's trimmed up. There we go. So that's a way to use that plywood for sheathing the floor and then if we go to layers and put our walls back on there boom there they are on top of the floor all the joints break where they're supposed to 
Uh, let's see, I'm going to take the walls out of there. Select that layer and then draw around this to select everything. That inverts the selection. I want to make this group of plywood a group so that it behaves by itself. So that when we put the walls in, take this plywood layer and control. If this was going to be a two-story two -story phone booth, we can just zip one of these guys up here. And then go another 5.5 inches. And then we can put the ceiling joists underneath that. And there we have a bunch of floor sheeting, pretty quickly done and pretty realistic looking. One issue I have is that I use the same texture for the 2x4s and the plywood. I should go back through and change these 2x4s to a different look, but I'm not going to do that here in this tutorial. But we do have the half inch plywood, and in some cases that would go on walls. So let's just go through the gears on that a little bit. Take this piece and stick it over here. Let's see if I've got that. I gotta make sure I'm grabbing that corner and lining it up with that corner. And let's rotate it up in the red direction, 90 degrees. That'll work. Then let's move and copy that. Up there I go with bad carpentry again. I didn't line this up on a so it breaks on a stud. Remember we moved those studs, kind of got some issues going on there. So I'm just going to leave the bad carpentry and and uh, talk about getting this making do with the way it is here. Oops, I don't want to move that. I want to move this piece of plywood. I just want to move it out a half an inch in this direction. Well, that's breaking on a stud. And we're going to slide it this way 16 inches because it wasn't long enough. That's the way you'd have to do that business. And we'll take another sheet. I'm just going to go through the gear speeding up this video. You can see what I'm doing here. And um, no sense in talking through every step, but I'll just speed the video up and show the steps that I use to sheet the outside of this structure. So with all those steps made, it's kind of fun to watch how this stu stuff comes together and you can hopefully get some ideas for setup on your model, pivot around here and we'll just build this structure back up. So we have the floor joist, subfloor sheeting, both layers of it. And then we have the wall framing and the ceiling joist. I should have put that plywood in two separate layers, but I didn't. We have the wall sheathing goes on and we have our decorations and it puts everything back in perspective with these steps so uh, other than the improper carpentry techniques I think you get an idea of how creating this these various pieces of framing material the lumber and the plywood panels etc that 
and can make a realistic looking structure and manipulate those pieces pretty quickly and mostly just by modeling methods, not drawing methods that keeps it moving along. So there you have it. Thanks for watching.